Welcome again to the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III. And I want to, first of all, thank everyone for supporting in the verse-by-verse -verse Bible studies that we we now have online in our catalog of studies that you could go to throughout your, your surfing of the web. And I just want to just refresh the need for the verse-by-verse -verse studies that it is the Word of God that brings us closer to Him. In every word, there's intention and meaning in every word. And it's so easy for us today in this you know, microwave economy that we have where we want it fast and we want to skip through. But it, it, it should be almost, I don't want to say shameful, but borderline shameful for someone to go through a lifetime and not journey through the complete Bible and then call themselves, you know, a believer. Um, this word is alive. And as much as we want it to come from a particular person all at once, and many of us even say today that it's congregations, they've been sitting on the congregations for so long and they've been missing out. You know, for if it wasn't for the mega churches and the TV evangelists, the eyes of many of us would not have been open. But there's no one man on this planet who could bring it to you. There's only one man who can bring you the righteousness, and that is through Christ Jesus, God in the flesh. And he says he was the word. So it's the word. And so I, I thank God for allowing me to be a, a useful vessel because the verse by verse stuff isn't that entertaining. And that's a reminder that this word of God isn't here to entertain us. It's to here to save us. Right? It's here to save uh, us to eternity. Amen? You know, souls are being lost. People dying every day. I don't know about y'all. You pick up the paper, classify it, got names in it every day. Every day. Right? And today, we're going to go back to um, textual, topical type of uh, Bible study. I'll be your facilitator. And the topic today comes from the chapter... Uh, uh, John chapter 13 and I just want to read verse 33 and 34 John chapter 13 33 and 34 little children I shall be with you a little while longer you will seek me and as I said to the Jews where I'm going you cannot come so now I say to you verse 34 a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Amen? And in this study, I want us as sitting around in this Bible study to picture the Christ preaching and in, in us sitting around as, a, as the disciples or the, the twelve apostles. But as you know, when, when Jesus was talking in these forums, that there were the 12 and there were a crowd around him normally listening. It, it speaks about him being on a boat, how he had, had to go up on the boat, and the crowd was on the shore. He got elevated so people could hear him. So the, the ability for your, you and I to put ourselves in there gives us it, almost a quickening understanding of the word. A more personal understanding of the word. If I could put myself there. So imagine. Kind of easy for me because this, this apostle was named Thomas and my name is Thomas. And I'm sitting there, right? And Jesus is going through. He's chopping it up. And then he's saying, you know, a little while I'm not going to be here no more. Right? And we're listening. You know, where is he going? Because really they don't know. Revelation is coming to, to them live. So we're sitting here and Jesus says, you know, he's going away. And in verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give you. I can imagine. I'm like this. Where's my pen? Right? I grab a notebook. I say, hold up, Jesus. He about to give me a new commandment. Right? I'm ready. I say, okay, Lord, I'm ready. And Jesus says, a new commandment I give you is that you love one another. Huh? 
Now I'm doubting Thomas, right? I'm like this. Come on, Lord. Come on now. Stop playing. Now, give me a little more. Love one another. Huh? Yo, okay. Well, there must be another one coming behind that. But that's what Jesus gave them. And can you imagine? Love one another. You all right? If you say so. You know, and you write it down on paper. But if we look at this, in, in this the society we live in today, the complicity and everybody's so intellectual. In Hebrews it says that, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that message, that commandment of love is, is relevant for today. And it's so easy to be like we might have been back then when we get that message to be, okay, God, but it's got to be something else. It's got to be, or oh, you want me to go lay hands on somebody. Or you want me to write eight books. You want me to make a world-changing movie. You want me to write a couple more chapters of the Bible, telling of your other revelations. No, he said, love one another. Love one another. And it, it, it's written in red, so it's from Jesus. But if we, if I look at, when I look at the world today, and all that's going around us, the recession, um, the, the big oil spill, this immigrant um, reform that's being argued and fought, there's being health reform that's being debated and fought. The economy over in Europe, people fighting over money. Everywhere, from the Iraq war to the Afghanistan war to the terrorists trying to blow up stuff and people trying to blow them up. When I look at it, and I, and I, I try to move forward and get deeper, deeper into the word. That's the verse that the Lord led me to recently. And it's love one another. And me trying to be intellectual and smart, and I know how you guys are, some smart people out here. Especially on the web, computer geniuses. And Lord, all you want me to do is love. But when we, when we do a study on love, and to see how complex and deep love is. And God reveals to himself that he is love. Not that he has to go get love or go find love. God is love. And in our, our attempt to duplicate or reflect God or Christ, then it, it is love that we should be. And I just want to jump in, go to, uh, of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because, once again, we're not talking about this mushy, mushy love. we got to remember that this text was translated from the Arabic to, to the Greek, to the Latin. And, and the love, the word love is so complex in its original form. Agape, that God love, is, is I love you regardless. Right? I love you regardless. Almost, almost like we could describe agape as you being the mother or father of a child and that child does something that gets a, a life sentence in prison. And you still visit that child during visiting hours on weekends. Why? Because that's your child. Right? You don't look at the, the, the sentence or the crime. That's what agape is. That's what God love it is. That's that just because. Regardless. Unconditional. Alright? And I just want to read chapter 13 in 1 Corinthians. It says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. It means I'm just running my mouth. 
right? If, I, if, I, if I'm not showing love, I'm just making noise. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. Huh? Come on, church. It's all about love. And I don't want to be, it's not that gushy, gushy, mushy love, or that girly, girly, erotic love. It's love. Making sure your next person next to you is all right. Amen? Let's go in love. It's a hard message, but we got to get there. Amen.